Hello everyone. I welcome you all to this session and in this session we will discuss about the continent Australia and it is the world's sixth largest country by total area and the world's smallest continent. In this unit we will cover five subheadings and they are physical geography, landforms and aerial features, climate, mountains, rivers, waterfalls and deserts and finally we have the major tourist attractions. Australia is a country located in the southern hemisphere near Indonesia, New Zealand and Vanuatu. It is an island nation that makes up the Australian continent as well as the island of Tasmania and some other small islands. Due to its isolation from the rest of the world, Australia was an uninhabited island until about 60,000 years ago. At that time, it is believed that people from Indonesia developed boats that were able to carry them across the Timur Sea. Most of the first settlers in Australia were convicts who were transported there from England. In 1868, the movement of prisoners to Australia entered and shortly before that in 1851 gold was discovered in Australia which significantly increased its population and helped to grow its economy. Australia comprises a land area of almost 7.7 .7 million square kilometers. The land area of Australia is almost as great as that of the United States of America, about 50% greater than Europe and 32 times greater than the United Kingdom. Much of the center of Australia is flat but there are numerous ranges and some individual mountains of which Uluru is probably the best known. Despite the popular references to Australia at the bottom of the world in the southern hemisphere, Australia is in fact the lowest continent in the world in terms of its elevation with an average elevation of only 330 meters. The highest points on the other continents are all more than twice the height of Australia's highest mount peak, Kosciuszko. The Australian landforms of today are thus seen to result from long continued process in a unique setting giving rise to typical Australian landscapes which in turn provide the physical basis for the distribution and nature of biological and human activity in Australia. The Australian mainland is in fact the world's largest island and it is often referred to an island continent. Australia is also surrounded by thousands of smaller islands ranging in size from rocky outcrops to some more than twice the size of the Australian capital territory. The largest of these is Melville Island in the Northern Territory with an area of 5,786 square kilometers. Eastern Highlands. The Eastern Highlands region of Australia is the highest part of Australia being a series of hills mountains and plateaus. This area is also known as the Great Diving Range which is further subdivided into smaller ranges. These ranges include the New England Plateau, the Australian Alps, the Snowy Mountains which are considered to be a part of the Australian Alps, the Blue Mountains and the Grampian Mountains. These landforms were made due to uplifting, folding and volcanic process in the earth's crust. 
this part of Australia also contains some volcanic plunks or extinct volcanic mountains that have been eroded until only strong volcanic rock remains. Some examples of volcanic plugs in the eastern highlands are the Warambangal range in New South Wales and the Glasshouse Mountains in Queensland. Central lowlands. Central lowlands are very dry because rainfall is blocked by the eastern highlands. The Simpson Desert which extends for 1,70,000 square kilometers is in the central lowlands. This desert is famous for its large red sand dunes which run north to south. The Simpson Desert is also famous for its salt pans which are intermittent lakes that only have water in them when it rains. When there is no rain, however, the salt pans dry up leaving behind the white salts. The largest salt pan in Australia, the lake air is found in the Simpson Desert. When it is full of water, lake air is the largest lake in Australia. The lake, however, only had water in three times in the 20th century. Lake Eyre is also the lowest point on the Australian mainland at 15 meters below sea level. The central lowlands have few tall mountains, but the Flinders Range in South Australia is an exception to this rule. The Flinders Range is located about 1,100 km north of Adelaide and extends for 800 km. Its tallest peak is St. Mary's Peak which is 1,171 meter tall. This mountain range was created through faulting. Western Plateau Western Plateau is a low flat area that has been eroded over a period of millions of years. Indicative of this is the Nalarbor Plain which is found in the southern part of the Western Plateau. Nullarbor comes from the Latin terms null which means no and arbor which means tree. This name is fitting as the Nullarbor plain is covered in limestone which was once a sea floor. Today many fossil sea creatures can be found here. The Western Plateau also home to many deserts. Due to cold water currents off the coast of Western Australia, this region is very dry. Some of the deserts in this region include the Gibson, Tanami, Canning, Great Sandy and Great Victoria deserts. The Western Plateau is not completely flat, however, monoliths or large freestanding rocks can be found throughout this area. These monoliths came into being when soft rocks surrounding them were eroded, leaving behind the stronger rocks. The most famous example of one of these monoliths is Uluru, formerly called Ayers Rock. In addition, the Harmsley Musgrave and Macdonald Ranges are mountain ranges in the Western Plateau. The Pilbara, Arnhem Land and Kimberley Plateaus are also high points in this area. Due to the size of the continent, there is not one single seasonal calendar for the entire continent. Instead, there are six climatic zones and this translates as two main seasonal patterns. Australia's climate is mostly arid to semi-arid, but the south and east are temperate and the north is tropical. Australia experiences temperate weather for most of the year, but the climate can vary due to the size of the continent. The northern states typically experience warm weather 
much of the time with the southern states experiencing cooler winters. Australia is also one of the driest continents on earth with an average annual rainfall of less than 600 millimeters. Like all countries in the southern hemisphere, Australia's seasons are opposite to those in the northern hemisphere. December to February is summer, March to May is autumn, June to August is winter and September to November is spring. The build-up is a humid time of the year between the wet and dry seasons. It usually lasts for 3 or 4 months. Things become quite tense during the build-up as people sit and swelter in the humidity while waiting and hoping for the first rains to come. The humidity continues day and night with no respite. So when the rains finally do come, everyone enjoys their cooling relief. Cyclones, snow and floods. The tropics are affected by the extremes of cyclones in the wet season and the inland deserts can remain totally dry for years while rains can produce floods. The wettest months in the southern capital are from May to July. Along the Great Diving Range, the mountain range that passes through New South Wales and Victoria, there are regular winter snowfalls. The snow season in the Alps in southeastern Australia is between June to September. The highest peak on the Australian mainland is Mount Kosciuszko, which is 2,228 meters above sea level. Mount Kosciuszko is a mountain located on the main range of the snowy mountains in Kosciuszko National Park, part of the Australian Alps National Parks and Reserves in New South Wales, Australia. It is a little known fact that the highest mountain point on Australian territory is in the Australian Antarctic Territory. Each year in December, an ultra marathon running race called the Course to Kosciuszko ascends to the top of Mount Kosciuszko after starting at the coast 240 kilometers away, Australia's longest river. The lengths of the 10 longest rivers in Australia were recalculated in September 2008 by Geoscience Australia using data from the National Topographic Database. The calculations confirm that Australia's longest single river is the River Murray at 2,375 kilometers. The River Murray and its tributary, the Darling River, are the main rivers in the Murray-Darling River Basin. This drainage basin comprises the major part of the interior lowlands of Australia covering more than 1 million square kilometers or about 14 percent of Australia. The Murray-Darling catchment also contains Australia's longest continuous river system. We shall see now Australia's deserts. Australia is the driest continent in the world. About 35 percent of the continent receives so little rain. The largest Australian desert is the Great Victoria Desert at 3,48,750 square kilometers spanning western and southern Australia. The second largest desert is the Great Sandy Desert in Western Australia at 2,67,250 square kilometers. The total desert area equates to 18 percent of the total mainland area of the country. Waterfalls 
Australia's waterfalls are not what most people associate with the land down under. But they are bountiful in the country and continent of Australia and there are amongst the country's scenic features that delight nature lovers. The spectacular site at Talbot Bay in Western Australia is just one of the amazing water features nature has on offer. But even the standard vertical drops are spectacular. Jim Falls in Kakadu National Park gushes a magnificent display of mist and colour in the rainy season and shrinks to nothing in the dry. Wallaman and Wolomombi Falls in Queensland and New South Wales respectively are the two largest permanent waterfalls in Australia with a combined drop of more than 500 metres. Lastly, we shall see the various tourist attractions in Australia. Some of the major attractions are Great Barrier Reef. One of the top destinations for underwater explorers and scuba divers is the world's largest barrier reef system, famously known as the Great Barrier Reef. Located in the Coral Sea, the Great Barrier Reef encompasses a huge area of more than 2,900 coral reefs and hundreds of islands and caves. The best way to explore the reef is by one of the numerous boat cruises that run along the northern coast of Queensland. The town of Keynes is regarded as the main gateway to the reef, but other towns also offer cruise operations. Sydney Opera House Sydney Opera House is Australia's most recognizable building and is an icon of Australia's creative and technical achievement. Since its completion in 1973, it has attracted worldwide acclaim for its design and construction, enhanced by its location on Benelong Point within a superb harbour setting. The design of the building with its soaring white roof shell shaped sails atop a massive red granite platform has been internationally acclaimed as an architectural icon of the 20th century. As a dominant sculptural building that can be seen and experienced from all sides, it is a focal point of Sydney Harbour and a reflection of its character. Fraser Island this beautiful island, which is located in Queensland, boasts rainforest, sand dunes, more than 100 freshwater lakes and pretty coloured sand cliffs. Fraser Island, which is just a short ferry trip from Herve Bay, is also considered to be the largest sand island in the world. This island boasts another unusual claim to fame. It's Dingoes are considered to be some of the most pure in all of Australia as they have not had as many chances to crossbreed with dogs as their mainland cousins have had. The Great Ocean Road The Great Ocean Road which is located in Victoria is considered to be one of the most beautiful drives in Australia. As it travels along Victoria's beautiful southwest coastline, the Great Ocean Road passes by some of the most stunning scenery in Australia, including the 12 Apostles, which are pretty limestone stack formations that rise out of the ocean near Port Campbell National Park. There are also a number of places along the Great Ocean Road where one can spot some of the Australia's famous wildlife including kangaroos, fur seals and emus. The Blue Mountains National Park 
The Blue Mountains National Park is located in New South Wales, approximately 80 km west of Sydney. Its proximity to the biggest city in Australia has made the scenic park a popular day trip for both tourists and locals alike. The park is best known for the Three Sisters, a rock formation that towers 900 meters above the Jamison Valley. The Blue Mountains National Park features miles of trails for hikers and mountain bikers. And it is also a popular natural playground for adventurers who enjoy adrenaline sports such as rock climbing and ab sealing. With Sunday Islands This stunning collection of 74 islands lies in the middle of Australia's Great Barrier Reef, making them a perfect jumping off spot for travellers looking to explore the amazing and colourful marine life that live in the waters of this area. Although most of the Whitsunday islands are deserted, seven do have outstanding resorts on them, including the world famous one and only on Heman Island, a favourite of celebrities and the rich and famous. One of the most beautiful of the Whitsunday Islands is White Haven Beach, which boasts blinding white sands. These islands are the perfect choice for travellers seeking a blissful vacation on a lovely tropical island or for those who enjoy hours of snorkeling and scuba diving. Kakadu National Park Located in Australia's Northern Territory, about Three hours north of Darwin, Kakadu is country's largest national park. There is a lot to see in Kakadu National Park, including a large concentration of Aboriginal rock art, some of which are estimated to be 20,000 years old. This park is also home to many different species of wildlife, including wallabies, dingoes and crocodiles. In addition, Kakadu National Park, which is home to one third of Australia's bird species, is a bird watcher's paradise. To conclude, I would say that Australia is situated on the Indo-Australian plate, which is surrounded by the Indian and the Pacific Oceans. It is separated from Asia by the Arafura and Taimu Seas, with the Coral Sea lying off the Queensland coast and Tasman Sea lying between Australia and New Zealand. Australia, owing to its size and isolation, is often dubbed the island continent and is sometimes considered the world's largest island. The diversity of Australia's features are significant and for those not familiar with the scale of the country, it is easy to think of it as a relatively small island. Many international travellers visiting Australia underestimate the distances between cities and travel times. Music